Hey guys, in a recent episode of From the Luthier's Workbench, and it was episode 80, I talked about how I do this polymer clay inlay technique. And ever since posting that video, I've had a couple of tips and tricks offered by viewers that I thought I would share with you in this quick tips episode. Uh, the first tip is, if you're going to be doing an inlay design that is going to extend over a couple of pieces of wood that are glued together, I highly recommend that you glue those pieces of wood together using hot hide glue rather than a wood glue like Typhon. And the reason is hot hide glue resists temperature, high temperatures better than Typhon. And since you're going to be putting it in the oven at you know 200 to 250 degrees for uh, 30 minutes to an hour, uh, Typhon is going to probably uh, want to fail on and that would cause your pieces of wood to separate where you've glued them together. And in this piece, that's exactly what I did. I said, I've got a book match top, which was glued down the center, and I didn't want the oven temperature to separate it. Now, I used Titebond on this, and, and to be honest, I haven't had that many issues with the wood failing, or with the glue failing and causing the wood to separate. But that's not to say that wouldn't happen down the, the road in the future, and I would hate to have a really cool looking design ruined because the wood separated. So I think going forward, I'm going to probably switch to using hot hide glue when I glue these pieces together. Another tip is when I apply the polymer clay, I pack it in, I bake it in the oven, and then afterwards I sand off the excess. Then I coat it with water-thin CA glue, or super glue, and let that soak in and bond with polymer clay to the wood. But there is a better way to do it. Uh, first of all, in, before applying the polymer clay, you can use a product called Bake and Bond. And I'll put a link in the description below. It's made by the same people who make the, the polymer clay. But what you do is you just brush it into your, your carved, uh, routed inlay design. Then you pack the clay in, and you bake it. And what happens is, is that bacon bond, it soaks into the porous wood and it helps to bond the clay to the wood so that it won't come out. So you don't have to use the CA glue. And as you know, CA glue can be really messy. It can also affect the way stain adheres um, to the surface. So uh, bacon bond to help bond the polymer clay into the wood. Also, when I apply the, the polymer clay, I usually pack it in and leave it proud of the surface. I'll bake it and then sand off the excess. Uh, that can be really time consuming, but what you can do is you can use a tissue blade before you bake it and then slice off that excess off the surface and then bake it. And that virtually eliminates the need to do sanding to remove excess later on. And that, that saves a great deal of time. So. Um, Consider using a blade to cut that excess off before uh, baking it. And um, another tip that came in was about baking times. Instead of following the manufacturer's recommendation for baking at, say, 250 degrees for 30 minutes, uh, you might want to consider baking at a lower temperature for a longer period of time, say 200 to 225 for 45 minutes to an hour. And what that will do is it will produce a harder uh, cure and um, it, there's less of a chance of discoloration. So uh, what you probably should do before you even attempt this is just to do some tests. You can um, form some discs out of polymer clay that are about half inch to an inch in diameter and about an eighth to a quarter inch thick. Bake those at different temperatures and different lengths of time in the oven to see which works best. And it should come out really hard like plastic. And once you've got that figured out, then you can go ahead and um, bake your, your inlay design. And so um, lower temperature, longer baking time. And you can also uh, cover everything with aluminum foil to help prevent uh, the potential for burning. And I, I've never had any issues with it burning, even when I baked at higher temperatures. But you know, everybody's oven's going to be a little bit different. That's why I recommend testing it first. Finally, uh, there was a comment that uh, someone left where uh, they said you shouldn't use a conventional oven that you use to make to prepare food in for baking polymer clay, and that's not true. 
When you bake polymer clay, as long as you don't burn it, it's non-toxic. If you burn it, it can give off some toxic fumes, but uh, it shouldn't be an issue if, if you're uh, baking at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. You shouldn't have any problems with any sort of toxicity. So uh, if you were going to be baking dozens and dozens of designs and doing this all day long, every day for days on end, yeah, you might want to get an oven specifically for baking your polymer clay. So uh, don't worry about it. But anyways, those are my tips for using the polymer clay as a, uh, an inlay product. And um, I will see you in the next uh, Quick Tips episode and in all my future uh, From the Luthiers Workbench episodes. So take care. We'll see you soon.